Again, we looked at some simple 3D tools from last uh, last class, the, the extrude. So let's start with a new file inside of Illustrator. And let's practice what we did last class so that we can... Oh, this is two inches, two inches. Uh, I'm going to use the default. It doesn't really matter. I'm just going over sizes. So again, um, let's just talk about the extrude again. Um, the extrude is a way to take an object and put it into a 3D space. Um, you can make objects. Last week we, we talked about making a, a kind of clogged wheel using the um, Pathfinder tools. Um, today I'm going to do that again. Let's talk about making an apple. So if I was going to make an apple, um, I could, at least the apple from the Apple computer, right? So if I was going to make an apple from the Apple computer, I would make a circle, okay? Then I would probably make another circle. It doesn't have like a little bite taken out of it, right? So if I make two circles like that, one on top of the other one like that, I can take the and select both of them. So just making two circles that are kind of over top of each other. And I can do what's called minus the front. So what I want to do is I want to cut this out from this one down here. So I can use this shape to cut this one out. If you remember from last week when we were doing that, we did it with the kind of wheel where we combined objects together into one object, right? Remember that was Unite, Unite. Well, today's a little bit different. I'm going to use a shape to cut a hole in the other one, um, kind of like what we did with the, the middle of the clog last week. If I select these two objects, I can go underneath the Pathfinder. If you don't remember, Pathfinder is a pop-up window. It's called Pathfinder. It's underneath one of the pop-up windows here under Windows. It's called Pathfinder right here. And what I want to do is I want to remove the front one, or minus front. It's the second one under the shape modes here, under the Pathfinder tool. This one, if I click on that, it's going to cut a hole in there. There's my. It looks more like Pac-Man, I guess. I don't know. I was trying to make the Apple logo. And then, um, of course, we could probably add a little stem up here, right? So how do we make a stem? Well, we could use the pen tool and um, make a little stem here. There we go. Does that look like a stem? And then, of course, if we want it, we want us to all to be one object, we could use what we did last time. And remember, we did, oh, and we maybe, maybe make a leaf, too. Should we have a leaf? No, just the stem. It's fine. I'm going to highlight that and unite. Unite. There we go. I don't know. That doesn't quite look like an apple, but it's a shape. I just want you to practice using these wonderful tools called Pathfinder to make multiple shapes. Okay. A little bit later on, we'll talk about the ones on the bottom here and why you would use some of these in a different lesson. When we get to using the perspective grid, we'll be using some of these down here. Um, but again, you got minus back. It's kind of opposite of minus front. You got intersect where the objects overlap each other. It'll only keep that part, and then where they overlap, it'll remove them. So there's a variety of different other ones. I'm going to give my shape a color, and then I'm going to remove the stroke. Okay, so I gave my shape a color, and then I removed the stroke because I want to try the 3D tools. So again, the 3D tools are are low. I'm going to rotate this just a hair. There we go. That looks more like an apple that way. The 3D tool, again, that we're going to go over will be the extrude. Again, the extrude is a way to um, bring a, an object with a um, oh, in space. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit. I'm going to select it. I'm going to go under Effect, and I'm going to go under 3D. And the one that I'm using is called Extrude. Extrude. How you extrude an object is you click on Extrude and Bevel. If you hit the Preview, you will see it. You'll see it in, in space here. You'll notice I have 3D. You can rotate your object here, and it'll rotate it in space. As well as you can change the extrude depth. We looked at that last class. You can make it deeper if you want, or less if you want. The perspective is a kind of camera angle, and what that means is if, you, if you've ever used a camera that has a kind of a, a, a lens, you know, there's a lens on the front of the camera, and those lenses are in kind of in it, in, in, in it. and if you use this, it's like the, the object is kind of being um, rotated, not really rotated, what I'm trying to say is 
it's the way that the camera looks at it. It's hard to explain, but it'll warp it, basically. It'll kind of warp it a little bit. Um, bevel would be the edge, um, the edge of where the two surfaces come together. So right now, if you think of this apple here, let me rotate a little bit more so we can see the edge. You'll see there's an edge between where these this face hits the front here, where this face hits the front here. So if you want, you can do what's called bevel, which will then give an edge to it. As you can see now, it's it's not actually you know lined up. There's like a little little edge there. And it's a bevel, and you can change the bevel to a slight bevel, and it just gives it a kind of edge. So the edges, and you can see it in the 3D space there. You can even go less than one point, I believe. I think you can put a half a point in there. No, I guess you can't. So there's a there's a variety of different um, bevels along the edge. In addition, if you click on the more options, you can change the lighting. I think we looked at this last class. Okay, you can actually add more lights if you want. You can change the color of the light. I believe light, ambient light, light intensity. Um, so if you have a 3D object, you can kind of light it a little bit differently. Ambient light is like all the lights. If you turn ambient all the way down, you see you get you don't get much of a um, light on the shadow there because ambient lights like light everywhere. What is this one? This is select move selected light to back of object. Ooh, I never saw that. Wow. Um, highlight size, steps blended. I guess this will make it smoother. Don't know. Shading is the, the kind of color of the light. You can give it, remember we were using red, I think, last class. So if you want, you can give it a warm kind of yellow. Uh, draw hidden faces. That's not really going to help here. And then if you wanted to put a, a, an art on there, you can see where it says map art. But what I told you before is the way to map an art, it has to be a symbol. So if I wanted to write something on the front of this right here, on the front of this, uh, on the front of this object, I could use map art. But again, you need to choose a symbol. And uh, right now I could put, I guess, a flower on there. And I can scale it up. There it is. We're going to make our own uh, vino bottle. There we go. Yeah, so you can map art. Map art, again, is a symbol that you can put on an object. Okay, so you, you get the idea of the um, extrude. You ready to make your wine bottle? Again, if you want to change it after you've made a 3D, you can change it again underneath the appearance window. Under appearance. Under appearance, your 3D object will it'll be right here. If you want to change it, you can click on there and make adjustments and hit OK again. If you don't want your 3D object, you can hit the delete button here and it'll go away and go back to normal. Oh, I guess I have to have it selected first. Click on it. Oh, cancel. Um, trash it. There we go. Now it's back to normal. Okay, let's make the wine bottle. I might keep that. Let's make a wine bottle. Okay, to make a, a, a an object again, it's called revolve. Revolve. You want to make a half an object and then have the the program revolve it all the way around. And it's something that we do in all 3D programs like Maya or any of those other 3D programs. You make an object and then you it's a half of an object and then you tell the program to make the whole object. So again, to make a wine bottle, it's very easy. Using the pen tool, I can click and make a wine bottle shape. Click, 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 click. It's like a half a bottle, like I drew on the board. I just use the pen tool. I'll zoom in and so you can see it. Again, I was just clicking like we did with the, 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 the what is it, fruit? No, yeah, when we were doing fruit. Just click, 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 click. So think of a half a shape of something. 
a half of a shape of something and then you're going to rotate it all the way around. The most important thing when you're making a shape like this is to make sure that the edge, this, this line right here, is straight. This line is straight. Because if it's not straight, it'll kind of put a hole in there. And if that's what you want, you can make an object that has a hole in it. I just like using the wine bottle because it's a nice example. I might pull these points down just a little bit. Make it a little longer. Okay, so you select your object. And you might want to save your file before uh, you do 3D tools. Sometimes they crash the program. Well, nowadays we got good processors, so it's not too bad. But in the old days, you know, when we had that, you know, one megahertz processor or whatever, it would be, take forever. So I'm going to select my object. I'm going to go under Effects. 3D and revolve. Revolve. In this case, if you hit the preview, you'll see what's happening. It's revolving around the one side. But that's not the side I want it to revolve around. I want it to revolve around the right edge. So if I go over here to where it says from left edge, I can say from right edge, and you'll see what you get. So you can change the side that you want it to rotate. It's a pretty ugly bottle, at least the top part. Again, you can adjust how much it rotates. It's doing 360 automatically, but you can only you can do a half a bottle, put in 180, and you can see what you get. You get a, you get a half a bottle here. So if you want a half an object, look. Cheese wheel? Yeah. Half a object, exactly. 360, the full object. You can change where the lighting is. You can add new lighting like you did before. You can change the shading color. Ooh, that's looking pretty good there. And then when you're all done, you can hit OK, and we'll make a label. OK, so we have a wine bottle. Did everybody get three? Did you all get it to work? No. Table kind of over here somewhere. Um, so let's let's think of uh, we can put some text on there. Raskov Vino. How about that? Put yourself a nice little font in there. Mongolian. That looks good. Change the size a little bit. Oh, we need an eye in there. Oh, oh, look at that. With a lowercase i, that's kind of cool. Maybe we'll put a lowercase o. Oh, look at that. Put a lowercase a, lowercase c, and lowercase v. Whoa, that's kind of cool. I'm enjoying that. Okay, and then, oh, maybe I'll center that. So make yourself a, a nice kind of label. Maybe we can get some, um, draw some grapes. Maybe put some grapes in there. We got a little, little... Round grapes. Maybe we can make um make some make some, make some grapes. Um, you can make a shape. Maybe I've done that before, where you just draw a shape for your label.
Maybe send that to the back. Uh-oh. My, my grapes are the same color as my label here. There we go. Everything's too bright. Is everything so... Maybe put a star in there. There we go. A little star right here. So make a label for yourself. Any it can be any looking thing. There we go. For you to wrap your label around your bottle, you need to make it into a symbol. To make it into a symbol, you go underneath the window symbols. Symbols. Here's your symbols. So symbols is a pop-up window. You select all your artwork that you have and just drag it into the symbol window and release your mouse. It's going to ask you for a name. You can give it a name if you want. So simply just drag it into the symbols window or there's a new button right here. You can click to make a new one. You can select all the objects, drag it into the symbols window can ask you to give it a name and then you're looking at this symbols window and you're wondering what is all this stuff inside this symbols window. Well what is inside the symbols window is mostly stuff for um, flash. Okay, when you when you use Macromedia Flash or, or well geez I used to call it Macromedia Flash. When you use Adobe Flash, uh, you make things called movie clips or graphics in Flash, and that's why they have them in here as far as a symbol is concerned. Because you use symbols inside of Flash. Okay, I can, I, we'll, we'll do a flash demonstration. How about next week? You guys want to do flash next week? Yeah, okay, we'll do. So we're going to draw something in Illustrator, and we'll bring it into flash, and we'll animate it next week. How about that? Uh, window symbols is a pop-up window. So under window, there should be symbols. So it's under window, symbols. It should pop up somewhere on your screen, and then just select your objects and drag it in there. Once it's dragged into the symbols, you go back to your 3D object. So do you remember how to go back to your 3D object? You remember it's under appearance. So select your 3D object. Select your 3D object. Go underneath appearance. Under the appearance window is a 3D revolve right there. If you click on it, it'll go back to normal. Again, you can hit preview so you can see what it looks like. But do you notice at the very bottom, there's something called map art map art. If you don't see map art, you mean to, you might need to open up more options. So it's there. It's called map art. So again, to get back to the 3D object, select your object, go to the appearance window and click on where it says 3D. Click on the map art. Now, when you're mapping the art onto your object, you can you map it onto different surfaces. If you notice in the map art window, it has surface numbers up here. If you notice, you can you can click through them. So make sure you, you're on the surface you want. In this case, I this is the surface I want. But you can see it kind of highlighted over here in red. Once it's highlighted in red, you can go underneath symbols here and you can choose. I'm going to choose Raskofino here. Once it's been, again, up here it says symbols. Once it's been on your label, you can move it around so you can see where it's located. Uh-oh. There we go. So you can move it around. You can scale it in this window if you want. You can move it around. That's about good. Um, again, you can hit OK. And you can hit OK. And you'll have your label on your bottle. Again, if you don't see where I'm at, it's underneath the E up. Appearance window under appearance. You'll notice there is 3d revolve right here under that 3d revolve I can hit map art in the map art is uh Oh It's not working now. Oh I didn't have my object selected. That's why select your object go to appearance Click on preview again 
clip on map art and then up here where it says symbols is where you choose your symbol and it could be a lot of fun 